Welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be making pork paprikash, which is very similar to the chicken paprikash, except it's made out of pork. So I have a, a pound of pork here already cubed. I like to make small cubes out of it. And then I'm going to need a fairly large onion that's going to make the sauce. And as optional, I like to use some fresh sweet peppers and if you have a fresh tomato that would be good but it, I don't have fresh tomato so I'm gonna use a tablespoon of tomato paste and for seasoning you definitely need paprika but as optional I'm gonna use vegeta for seasoning so let me just go ahead and cut up my onions and peppers and then we'll pick it up from there. Heat up the frying pan high. I'm gonna use two tablespoons of oil. Put the chopped onion in here to saute. Put a pinch of salt. That's gonna help the onion sweat and start sauteing. Saute this for about five minutes. Um, stirring occasionally every minute or so. Turn it down to medium. When the onion almost looks like it's ready, then you can add the sweet peppers. And now you're going to saute these together for another couple of minutes. Now I'm going to add the tomato paste. Saute that for about a minute. If you're using fresh tomatoes, this is the time to add that as well. Now we're ready to put the paprika in it. You always have to take off your hot pan of the burner. Turn off the heat. And add a good amount of paprika. It's really up to you. It's at least a tablespoon, I would say. I put in three heaping spoon of teaspoon, which is really a big tablespoon. And additionally, I'm going to put vegeta in it. And this also has salt, so I'm going to watch how much salt I'm putting in. Stir that up. Now I'm gonna dump my pork in there, which is gonna add some liquid. It's gonna come out of the pork, but I'm also gonna put a little bit of water in this. Once everything is coated with the paprika mixture, Again, I'm just adding a little bit of water, maybe a quarter cup. And that just helps us to bring up the stuck down pieces if there's anything on the pan. And now I'm going to cover this and cook it 
on a fairly low heat for about 20-25 minutes. So I cook this under the cover for 20 minutes. I, I did stir it a couple of times and now it's very concentrated as you can see. The liquid is almost all gone. So I'm gonna cook this just for a minute or two without the cover because I want it to kind of saute the meat now because now it's cooked and tender but sautéing gives it another dimension of taste so I will turn this up a little bit to medium now in the meantime I'm gonna prepare the sour cream sauce as I said before, don't just put sour cream directly into the hot dish because you might get tiny crumbles from the sour cream. So to make it smooth, I have a half a cup or so hot water. And I'm going to add two big tablespoons of sour cream to it, to the water. Now if you do have enough sauce, you can actually take the sauce and use that to dilute your sour cream or to temper it. So mix this until it's smooth. In the meantime, you see how my meat is getting sauteed nicely. Some people put a little bit of flour in this to thicken the sauce I want. I can pour my sour cream sauce into this. And I may get some more water depending on how I feel about the texture. And I'm going to cook this just for a minute or so again. You see, this is why you don't need flour in it, because the sauce gets thickened from all that onion and pepper that we cooked into it. This is actually ready to go. So today I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. Someone suggested that I could serve paprikash with some nukedli. Nukedli is just little tiny dumplings, Hungarian dumplings, uh, that can be served with anything um, saucy meats. My family is not into dumplings as much. Um, I do serve my pork paprikash with elbow macaronis. So let me show you how to make nukedli. It's pretty simple. I'm just gonna make one batch, which is one egg. A pinch of salt. Break up your egg and then about a cup of flour. And then a little bit of water. I'm looking for a consistency of a little bit thicker than um, pancake batter. And you'll see why in a minute when I start cooking it.
<clears throat> this sponge is going to add more flour and more water until you get to the amount you really want. I think I want a little more than that. If I'm going to go through the trouble of making it, right? So it, it does look like a, a thick pancake batter, right? Okay, I'm going to let that rest for a minute or so. In the meantime, I'm going to bring a pot of water into boil. This is what I'm going to be using to make my nokedli. This is specifically made for that but you can use it without this and I'll, I'll show you next how to do that. So you need a rapidly boiling water and to make this more successful it helps to oil this plate. So we'll put some of the Onto the tray, and I haven't done this for so long, but all you do is push it through into the water. So I can turn the water down a little bit. Through these holes, it's gonna, depending on how hard you press it, it will make little noodles dropping into the hot water and immediately start cooking. You see how they come to the top? It won't take much to cook them. test it by just taking one out and making sure it, it cooked through, but you see how tiny these are? And it will vary in sizes depending on, again, the pressure that you applied. I'm going to taste this to make sure it's done. As you can see, a little time, this will take a minute or two total to cook. Easiest to take them out is with something like this, a slotted spoon. And I'm just gonna put it into a, a strainer. Oh, that's too big. A smaller one. Because you wanna use that same water for the next batch.
you'll see they actually puffed up a little bit as well as they cooked. So now you bring the water to boil again. And then I'm going to show you how to do this without this equipment. Take something flat like I'm going to take a lid, a pot lid, and then you need a knife or you can do this also with a fork or a spoon. So put your noodle batter on the flat surface that you're going to use. like that and then you start shaping your noodles and you just take a little bit of the time drop it in obviously this will take longer but if you like big dumplings probably is gonna be good you see how it just falls off and then occasionally stir It's going to have different shapes now, right? Less consistent. But just as tasty. I do need to bring this up a little more to start boiling again. So you have no excuse not making this. You can just use a plate for this as well. If you have like a nice flat plate. So the bigger your nookelly is, the longer you want to cook it. Although they are rise to the top, it doesn't mean they're done yet. So you can take one, one of the bigger ones, and make sure they're cooked through. Still, still a little floury, so. I'm going to cook it for another 30 seconds. Alright. Bring those out. And actually I'm going to use this boiling water to cook some elbow macaronis for the rest of the family. So bring it to boil again. Oops. Get about 10, 12 minutes. You can serve this with elbow macaroni or more traditional with nocadli. So this is pork paprikash 
Nick Nathedly. Enjoy.